Now, here's the thing though. This, uh, this process of finding the, uh, finding the point of intersection and then therefore pumping into this other form, it's a little bit awkward. I don't really need to know this point. I really want the line. That's what I'll, Can I go directly there? That would be more efficient. So that's what this method is that I'm about to show you. Uh, make a little subheading out of me, which is a more efficient path. <coughs> what I'm trying to go for here is, I had to solve this question, we had to solve this question of finding the concurrent lines uh, with this intermediate step. And it took some time, right? In fact, most people had much more working than I did. Is there a way can we can go directly there? Go straight from the equations to this line. Here's the first thing I want to point out. I started to solve by elimination, okay, to find the point of intersection. But there are lots of other ways that you can combine L1 and L2. Did you notice that? For instance, I can just say equation 1 plus equation 2. That's another way that's legitimate to combine them. So if I say that, Write down with me, what happens? I'm going to add the left-hand sides, then I'm going to add the right-hand sides. So this is what it looks like. Here's the left-hand side of equation 1. Here's the left-hand side of equation 2. What's the right-hand side equal? Zero. Great. Okay. Now, what happens when we go and bash through this? How many x's do you get? Just collect like terms for It's four of them. How many y's? And what's the constant term? Okay, now, does this work out? I could pull the um, screen down one more time, but I'm not going to. I can quickly test out that this works. Does it uh, pass through negative 1, 1? Negative 1, 1. This will become negative 4 plus 1, which is negative 3. Negative three. You add 3, sure enough, you get 0. So it works. That's reassuring. It's just one teeny problem. There's lots of these, right? I mean, we just saw that thing animate and show us all the different versions, depending on whatever gradient we wanted, right? But I've only got one here. I want to get all the rest of them. So here's this really clever way to overcome this problem. And it has to do with general form. General form means that it's equal to zero, right? The reason why that's so useful is I can multiply this by anything I like, any constant that I like, and it's still the same equation, for instance. I could have 2ax plus 2by plus 2c, and the right-hand side would still be zero. Do you agree? Same line, haven't done any violence to it. That means when I do this, right, instead of doing this, I'm not just going to add equation two. I'm going to add a multiple of equation two. See what happens. Uh, I need to choose a letter to be my multiple, and I want it to be anything, because I know the line can be anything. So I'm going to choose the letter K. K is a pretty common choice for a constant. So I want K lots of that equation. Okay. Now, if you have a look at this, I'm going to add the left-hand side of equation 1, just like I did before. It's a really bad x. Then instead of adding 3x minus y plus 4, I'm going to add K lots of them. I've added the left-hand side and k lots of the left-hand side of this. Sorry, left-hand side of 1, k lots of the left-hand side of 2. What happens on the right? It's still 0, but to clarify why it's 0, I want to show the right-hand side of equation 1 is 0. The right-hand side of equation 2 ends up being 0, but it didn't, like, we've done something to it. We've done something to it. So I'm going to write this. Now this is crucial, even though it doesn't end up making a difference to our working. This is why we're using general form. You can't do this trick with any of the other forms because you end up with something different on the right hand side. Okay. Now, I'll just simplify out. Uh, I don't need these brackets anymore. Um, I can expand this guy here. I'm going to write this as 3kx minus, what have I got here? ky plus 4k. Okay. The reason I've done this is just to make it a little bit easier to, again, just like I started with, put this equation in general form. I've got the right-hand side being 0. What else do I need to make this general form? I have, I have like 
six terms over there. How many am I supposed to have? I'm only supposed to have three. I need to know how many x's, how many y's, and what the constant term is. So tell me how many x's there are. There's 3k of them here. And then there's one here. Do you agree? That's how many x's I've got. So I'm going to express that like so. That's how many x's there are. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to do the same thing for y's. How many y's do I have? I have two of them here, and I have minus k of them over there. Yes? So two minus k. That's how many y's I've got. All right. Lastly, what's the constant term? Plus 4k minus 1. Done. Uh, you obviously don't need the brackets on the end there for the 4k minus 1, but I like to do that to in, sort of make it clear and emphasize A, B, C, in case I need to do something like perpendicular distance formula or whatever. Okay. So let's have a think about this. Does this work out? Uh, that should be far enough because I still want to see that. Okay. Help me see if this is going to work. Let's get rid of that guy. What's this equation down here? We start with uh, how many x's were there again? Three. three. Good, so 3k plus 1. Whoops. Okay, now again, just like before, it says, do you want to add that in? We will in a second. I'll come back to it. How many y's are there? 2 minus k. 2 minus k. And then that constant term was, was 4. 4k minus 1. 4k minus 1. I did forget the y. Thanks. Minus 1 equals what? Zero. Because it's general form. So I'm going to add that slider in. Okay, so the first good sign is fantastic, it's concurrent with the others, right? But now what happens is I vary k because k is the thing that I can change. Well, looks like we did it right. Okay, so this thing is really nice because I've do, I don't even know what the point of intersection is, but I can still find the, all of the lines that go through this point. Now that's nice because here, the point of intersection was easy to find. Guess how often the point of intersection is going to be easy to find? <laughs> Answer, not that often. I, I crafted this to give you really nice simple numbers. Okay? But if these are gross things, if they're fractions, uh, if there's irrational stuff in there, then you're going to be in some trouble. This process lets you go completely around this. You, don't so, you never solve simultaneously which is kind of advantageous, right? It's just quick. All right, now let me hit pause on that. When it comes to, no, I'm too slow. All right, let me see if I can move it over. Here's the last thing I want you to know. Here we go. Right before I turn this predictor off. This value of k is special. This value of k I've chosen, actually the projector makes it a bit hard to, the screen makes it a bit hard to see. This value of k is zero. What's special about k equals zero? Have a look at the diagram. When k equals zero, think back now. This will be a bit confusing if you guys imagine. See what k was? k was how many lots of equation two do you want? So if k is zero, that means I don't want any of equation two. So what do you get left with? You get left with equation one. Okay. So let's tie this all up in a nice neat bow. This process that we've just learned has a name. It's a very, very imaginative name. It is called the k method. Because the other name is finding the equation of a line concurrent with two other lines without finding the point of intersection. Bit of a mouthful. So K method named after that K right there. How do we summarize this? If you have two lines in general form, right? So in this format here, let's write it like this. Given this line and this line both equal to zero, I can avoid working out the point of intersection. I can go straight to my new line doing this. See this here? So let's state this simultaneous equations step with algebra, right? Given L1 equals zero and L2 equals zero, what's the format of this line right here? Looks like this to me. You've got L1 untouched over there. You've got K lots of the second line. And of course, because it's in general form and the right hand sides are all zero, what do you get on this right hand side? Zero. This line here is concurrent. Right? 
So you can go directly there without finding the point of intersection. If k is equal to 0, you end up with L1, which means that if you wanted to, you didn't have to have it in this order, you could have written it like this. And it would have given you the same result. Okay? Um, but most people remember it like this because why wouldn't you put the numbers in order? Okay? So put a big box and some colour and highlight around that. This is probably the most important part of it. It's the part you need to remember and write down. One of the notable absences from the reference sheet. Why isn't this on the reference sheet? Because all it is, is just a use, a particular use of the general form, which you need to know and is, is on there. And then you can derive the rest of it following that. Okay? Right. How's your brain going? One last little point before I set you to work. Okay? Uh, this is cool because it's all the lines. Every single line that's concurrent with this. What if we did want a specific one? What if we wanted the one that goes through, say, passing through, pick a point, any point? One, one. I heard one, one. <laughs> and it's nice and simple, too. How do I find the particular line, because there's only one of them, of these that passes through one, one? What will I do? I'll substitute in x equals 1 and y equals 1. Watch what happens. Okay? There's the line down there. Okay? When x equals 1, what do you get? That's just 3k plus 1. Yes? When y equals 1, you just get 2 minus k. And then you've got this guy over here. Okay? Can you add those constants for me? Constants. 1, 2, minus 1. Sorry, I said constants, right? <laughs> constants. Uh, you're just going to get two, aren't you? You'll get two on this side, but I'm going to get him over here because I need to solve for k. So I'm going to subtract two from both sides. Is that okay? Now tell me how many k's there are. Six. Good, the sheep agree. So what's k? Okay, let's have a look. K's, wait, isn't k negative a third? It's negative a third, right? Negative a third. Huh. Of course it is, isn't it? What was that point of intersection we found earlier? It's negative one, one. So you have to be horizontal to get through. Are you happy? 